You thought the relationship was developing, and maybe you even slept with him. And then the slow fade began. He didn't text or call the next day. And when you texted him, he texted back 10 hours later. He called the next day and acted like nothing was wrong. And then crickets. The slow fade in a relationship is worse than ghosting. And here's why. What slow faders don't realize is that prolonging a breakup can be much more painful than being direct and kind. And while ghosting has become the norm in our society today, the slow fade is even worse. One partner wants to end the relationship, but they don't say anything. Instead, they continue to pretend that the relationship is fine while sending mixed messages and slowly pulling away. It gives the other person hope that maybe things are really okay. Maybe their partner just needs a little space and they don't want to appear clingy or needy so they don't say anything. And then the, girl, the relationship gradually comes to an end. Slow fading is a form of gaslighting. In a slow fade, the person on the receiving end is being gaslit, questioning themselves about what they did wrong and what they can do to fix things. Ghosting, as painful as it is, is final. Slow fading is filled with uncertainty, which is why it can be torture. It can be harmful to our self-esteem. It can erode trust when you begin to date other people. And it can make people question their judgment of somebody's character. And in some cases, it can make people stop dating altogether because it's too painful to imagine going through that again. Here are five things you can do when you are the victim of a slow fade. Number one, ask yourself high value questions. Instead of asking why somebody slow faded, ask better questions like why would I want to be with somebody who slow fades or who doesn't communicate clearly or kindly, somebody who runs from conflict or confrontation. The why the person did what they did, those are questions you can't answer, but you can answer the questions of why would I want to be with somebody like this. Number two, go no contact. You might have the urge to ask for closure. Most of us want closure. You might want to berate that person for slow fading, but the most dignified thing you can do is nothing at all. Number three, do a relationship post-mortem. Figure out where you might have been ignoring the red or yellow flags so you don't do that next time. Number four, speak up from the very start. When you start dating again, address any issues that come up right away. It is never too early to state your standards around communication or what you're looking for in a relationship. Number five, don't excuse the inexcusable. People make all kinds of excuses for not following through on commitments, for not calling when they said they would, for being so busy they can't even text or follow through on a date. If someone wants a relationship with you, they will make it clear and they will show interest. Words are cheap. Actions following words are everything. If you ever experience a slow fade again, nip it in the bud at the very first sign and speak up. See how they respond. It will tell you everything you need to know about their ability to be a good partner. And if they can't invest in the relationship at an equal level, it's time to move on and find a better match. If you're curious about how coaching can help you work through issues like this, like trust, hypervigilance, anxiety, shyness, repeated patterns in dating and more, let's talk. I offer a complimentary 45-minute breakthrough session to anyone who's seriously interested in working with me. And finally, finding love. Apply at lastfirstdate.com forward slash application.